Hi guys, this is O Level Chemistry, and we are looking at some general chemistry concepts. Question one: Choose from the following oxides to answer the questions: calcium oxide, carbon dioxide, copper two oxide, silicon dioxide, sodium oxide, sulfur dioxide, sulfur trioxide, and zinc oxide. Each oxide can be used once, more than once, or not at all. Which oxide has a giant covalent structure? So a giant covalent structure can also be called a macromolecular structure. So the only macromolecule found in this list is silicon dioxide. Next, reacts with both acids and alkalis. So an oxide that reacts with both acids and alkalis has to be an amphoteric oxide. And amphoteric oxides are oxides of aluminum and zinc. So aluminum oxide is not listed here, but zinc oxide is making zinc oxide the correct answer for this question. So this is zinc oxide. Next, reacts with water to form a strong acid. So calcium oxide will form a base. Carbon dioxide will form a weak acid. Copper two oxide will form copper hydroxide. Silicon dioxide will not react. Sodium oxide will form NOH, which is a base. Sulfur dioxide will form H2SO3, which is a weak acid. Sulfur trioxide will form H2SO4, which is a strong acid. So they want an oxide which forms in a strong acid. And zinc oxide would form an amphoteric solution. So sulfur trioxide is the correct answer here. Sulfur trioxide contains a cation with a charge of plus one. A charge of plus one would mean that this particular salt or oxide would belong to a group 1 metal and the only group 1 metal seen in this list is sodium so the answer here would be sodium oxide although this question is over there is one more thing we can practice here we can practice writing the formula of these oxides so calcium oxide is CaO carbon dioxide is CO2 Copper oxide, copper two oxide would be CuO. Silicon dioxide is SiO2. Sodium oxide is Na2O. Sulfur dioxide would be SO2. Sulfur trioxide would be SO3. And zinc oxide would be ZnO. So these are the formula of the given oxide. Question two, choose from the following chloride to answer the questions. Ammonium chloride, calcium chloride, carbon tetrachloride, copper two chloride, hydrogen chloride, magnesium chloride, and zinc chloride. Each chloride can be used once, more than once, or not at all. Which chloride is a colored solid? So a colored solid would have to be a chloride of a transition metal, and the only transition metal chloride seen in this list is copper two chloride which will have a blue color reacts with warm aqueous sodium hydroxide to produce a gas that turns red, red litmus paper blue so it has to be a salt containing ammonium ions because when heated with sodium hydroxide ammonia gas is released so the chloride present here that contains ammonium ions is ammonium chloride Next, we have a chloride which reacts with water to form a strong acid. A uh, chloride that forms a strong acid here would be hydrogen chloride because hydrogen chloride is HCl. It is a gas when it is produced, but when dissolved in water, it forms a strongly acidic solution of HCl aqueous. So hydrogen chloride. Next, we have 
a chloride that contains a cation with a charge of plus one. So the chloride that has a charge of plus one here, one is again is ammonium chloride because ammonium ion has a charge of plus NH4 positive. So ammonium chloride. So we can actually write the formula of all these chlorides. Ammonium chloride is NH4Cl, NH4 having a charge of plus one. Then we've got calcium chloride, which would be CaCl2. Then we would have carbon tetrachloride, which would be CCl4. Then we would have copper two chloride, which would be CuCl2. Then we would have hydrogen chloride, which would be HCl. Then we would have magnesium chloride, which would be MgCl2. And lastly, we would have zinc chloride, which would be ZnCl2. Now, HCl may also have a charge of plus one, but the thing is ammonium chloride is an ionic salt, whereas HCl is a covalent molecule. So that is why the answer for the part that asks for contains a cation with a charge of plus one is not HCl because it is a covalent molecule. Next, has a simple molecular structure similar to methane. So the structure of methane is CH4 and the one that is similar to it would be CCl4, which was being drawn earlier. So CH4 and CCl4 have similar structures and both of them are simple molecular uh, compounds. So the answer is CCl4 and this is written in the list as carbon tetra chloride. Question three, choose from the following elements to answer the questions. Calcium, chlorine, chromium, copper, krypton, nitrogen, oxygen, sodium, sulfur. Each element may be used once, more than once, or not at all. Which element is a monoatomic gas? So the listed elements are calcium, which is Ca, which is a solid. We've got chlorine, which is Cl2, which is a gas, but it is diatomic. Then we've got copper, which is also a solid metal. Then we've got krypton. Krypton is a noble gas and it consists of a single atom. So this is the answer for the question asked. Next, we have nitrogen. Nitrogen is a gas, but it is diatomic. Then we have oxygen, which is also a diatomic gas. Then we've got sodium, which is a solid metal. And then we've got sulfur, which is a solid covalent compound, or rather uh, the structure has covalent bonding in it. Is a monatomic gas, so the answer was already selected as krypton. Next, makes up 78% of dry air. So the main composition of air is the diatomic gas, nitrogen. Has an oxide which reacts with the impurities in a blast furnace to form slag. So the one that has an oxide that would react with the impurities in a blast furnace would be the oxide of calcium or CaO, calcium oxide. So the metal here or the, uh, right, right, the metal, the element here would be calcium or calcium as it is called. Forms aqueous ions with a plus two charge which gives a dark blue solution on addition of excess aqueous ammonia. So if it is a colored compound, the only transition metal uh, that has been listed in this uh, given list is copper. So the answer would be copper here. And lastly, we've got an element which reacts with propane in the presence of ultraviolet light by a Substitution reaction. So halogens undergo substitution reactions with halogens in the presence of UV light. So the halogen that is present here is chlorine. Question four. 
choose from the following elements to answer the question. Aluminum is a solid element. Carbon is a solid element. Hydrogen is a diatomic gas. Iron is a solid transition metal. Magnesium is a solid group 2 metal. Nitrogen is a diatomic gas. Oxygen is a diatomic gas. Sodium is a group 1 solid. And vanadium is a transition metal. Which element is a catalyst in the Haber's process? So the element that is catalyst in the Haber's process is iron. Makes up 21% of dry air. So air mainly consists of nitrogen. And secondly, the most abundant gas in air is oxygen, which comprises of 21% of air. So the answer here would be oxygen next we have an element which can be formed when hydrocarbons are cracked so when hydrocarbons are cracked the element that can be produced is hydrogen gas other than that we have production of alkanes and alkenes an element that forms aqueous ions with a 3 plus charge, which gives a white precipitate when added to aqueous ammonia. So the elements here that can form a charge of 3 positive are aluminum and iron. However, iron, if it has a 3 plus charge, would form red brown precipitates, while aluminum would form white precipitates, making aluminum the correct element for this question. Next, we have an element that has an atom with only three electrons in its outer shell. That means it belongs to group three. So aluminum belongs to group three, carbon belongs to group four, hydrogen belongs to group one, iron belongs to the transition block, magnesium belongs to group two, nitrogen belongs to group five, oxygen belongs to group six, sodium belongs to group one, and vanadium belongs to the transition block. So the only element here that belongs to group 2 is aluminum.